We are hearing a lot about global inflation and how everything is getting more expensive. But did you know there's another type of personal inflation that's affecting our money? Here to discuss lifestyle creep and its sneaky effects is money and fintech expert Ashley Nguyen. Hi, Ashley. Hi, Tracy. It's always great to have you here. This topic is so good. So lifestyle creep or lifestyle inflation, what do these terms mean and how do they sneak into our lives? <laughs> okay, so uh, lifestyle creep. Mm -hmm. It's a gradual increase in the amount that you're spending, right? So yeah. imagine an intruder infiltrating your financial habits without you even knowing it. Yes. That's a little bit dramatic, but it's true. <laughs> it's so imagine like you're you're getting a pay increase, you're you get a bonus or you've paid down your debt mm -hmm. and now you have a little bit of extra money. It's this psychological now I have a little bit more to spend. Right. But fun fact, in the US <laughs> you don't. Yeah, 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 you don't really. So let's say let's say for in the US 40% of Americans right now are living paycheck to paycheck mm -hmm. while making a hundred grand. Mm. Yeah. And it used to be, you know, everyone thought, oh, if I could just get to those six figures, it's yeah. like I'm going to be a millionaire. Not anymore, yep. especially not in a big city in Canada where mm -hmm. you're getting taxed half half of your dollars, half of your paycheck. So, uh, like, I, I, the idea of lifestyle creep to me, I feel like we felt that, uh, my family, when we were very big on using things until we, until they, you can't use them anymore. The wheels fall off. I don't like to <laughs> just change things because there's a shiny new one on the market. Yeah. So when we, when I got this job, it's like I felt the pressure to change our car. Everywhere we went, people are like, why are you shoving your babies and that huge dog into your Toyota Tercel? And we were like, because it still works. Like, why would you get a new car? But I, so for me, when I think of lifestyle creep, I feel like part of that is a bit about peer pressure and keeping up appearances yep. and keeping up with the Joneses. Yep. Is that a part of it as well? Yep, you got it. It's about the now immediate gratification decision to, versus what does it mean for your financial goals long term, right? Yeah. Um, it, folks, Canadians age 18 to 35, 50% of them go paycheck to paycheck, right? That's how they're living. Mm -hmm. But the interesting thing is when you go from 35 to about 54, that goes almost up by 10%, which means folks who are starting to make more money mm -hmm. as they get older are actually spending more and putting themselves in worse off situations. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so you've sort of touched on it, but why do we need to be worried about lifestyle creep? Yeah, okay, well, let's, let's use an example. Let's break it down in numbers. Um, let's say you have you make $70,000 and mm -hmm. you're now getting a 14% pay raise. Woohoo, 14%, congratulations. Mm -hmm. To a lot of people, that feels like a lot of money that's right away. That's a significant right? raise, 14%. Yeah, yeah that feel, that's yeah. good. It's more than inflation, right? Yes. And you're looking at $80,000. Yeah. Um, now, I don't know about you, but you know that psychologically for me means I can take more Ubers. I right. can pick up all the things I have never picked up at Costco before. You yes. start to kind of like <laughs> pick up on things, I'm right? I'm getting the tampons and the almonds. Yeah, yeah, right? exactly. <laughs> like all of it, all of it. And, and then it kind of adds up. But what you don't realize is after taxes, you're going from 70 to 80. That 14% increase is really only about $570 every month. Right, which is not that much. I can spend $570 very fast. That's a trip to the grocery store <laughs> yeah. now, right? Yeah, 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 yeah very yeah. quickly. Okay, so it's also being realistic with, you know, how much do you really have yeah. to spend? So can you show us what we could do uh, with that money instead? Yeah, What absolutely. do we do with that 500 odd dollars? Right, okay, well, like, let's, opportunity cost is what's important, right? Yeah. So when you think about well, rather than me going and spending that money at Costco or whatever your heart desires, I'm going to instead think about what, what if I invested it? What would that mm -hmm. actually mean for me 10 years from now versus picking up the tampons and the almonds? Yes. So, <laughs> so let's say, um, I'll give you an example. Let's say you have been now after COVID used to working out at home. Right? Yep. You've been doing it for free, you have some weights, you go for runs, you're, you're still in tip-top shape. Mm -hmm. And then you get a little bump and you're like, well, now I want to join Equinox. Oof, and a, a pricey gym. Yeah, a pricey gym. I want to yeah. spend $250 more a month. Ouch. Well, it's, it's, 
it, it doesn't always sound like a lot, but then once you kind of think about, okay, what if I took that to 250 yeah. and I invested it into like, let's say the S&P 500 index fund. That's like a very straightforward fund. It's mm -hmm. gotten 10% over the last 10 years on an average year over year. Um, you would have about $50,000 more in savings in 10 years, and mm -hmm. that's about $20,000 in interest earned. Now you know, right? Which that's decision good. do you make? Right. So that money could be a lot bigger. Do you have another, any other examples? Um, yeah. So a really good example, um, and it's very common for most folks. It's what about I up? What about upgrading my home? So let's mm -hmm. say you live in a townhouse. Yeah. And it's a three bedroom townhouse. And you're like, you know what? I've been gunning for that extra office, so nobody bothers me. Yeah. Now you want to upgrade to a house with four bedrooms, mm -hmm. and it's about fifteen hundred dollars more a month in rent. Yeah. Okay. You're like, I can afford this. I can go ahead and do it. Now, what if I told you instead, if you invested that money in the same fashion in the last as the last example, you could make you can save yourself three hundred grand for when you retire. Whoa. What would you do? Obviously, yeah, you would want the 300 grand. Yeah. So it's it's almost, you have to really think in those terms. What could this money be yeah. if I wasn't just spending it on consumables and entertainment and, yeah. you know, even space or a gym, you know, do yeah. you really need it, right? Yeah, exactly. What can we do to reverse the uh, the creep and curb our spending a little bit? Yeah. Um, there's two things I'll leave you with. Uh, the first thing is I'm a big proponent of, of course, tracking your expenses, making sure you know what you're spending. Yeah. Um, but also, of course, utilize your technology, right? We have uh, the banks now. A lot of them will tell you exactly what you're spending. What are your transactions? What are the That's categories true. that you're spending your money in? Mm -hmm. Or get an app, like you need a budget, right? This mm -hmm. helps you to really understand what each line item is. And then the last thing I'll say is just financial literacy know what you can do with that money, know what your savings plans look like, yeah. all the good stuff that you need to kind of do in order to get yourself set up and financially healthy. And if you don't know, get an expert who does. Exactly. Right? Often banks will offer you financial advisors and they can help you out. Every time it goes to the, the place in my app where it shows me what I've been spending money on, I scroll past. <laughs> to see my spending habits. They're terrible, okay? <laughs> Ashley, thank you so much.